Hey, how's everybody doing today? I hope you all are having a blessed day today. I just got empty with my load and having my lunch right now, so I figured I might as well hop on here and do a video. The last couple days, I uh, the last couple of videos, I shared about my Amish testimony and my upbringing and the rules of the Kenton, Ohio Amish community. And uh, not only did my followers double, but they almost tripled. So I wanted to hop on here and uh, tell you about after I left. I told you, told everybody a lot about when I was Amish. And now I want to do a video and tell you what happened right after I left. So right after I left, obviously I was 18. I had to wait until I was 18. I tried to leave when I was 16, but thanks to a good buddy of mine, he helped me out. And I finally got to jump the fence. Now... The grass looked awfully green on the other side, growing up Amish. Looked awfully green. So when I leave, I thought it was going to stay green, but I turned it brown. Why did my grass turn brown? Well, see now when I leave, I, I wanted nothing to do with religion. I wanted nothing to do with the Bible. I was fed up with religion. I was fed up. If I heard the word Bible, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Somebody could share the gospel with me about how to be saved. I just turned away and I didn't want to hear it. I was just done. I was fed up. Uh, bless my cousins up in Michigan. Some of them has left that uh, immediately the first Sunday went to church, did the right thing, you know. I didn't do that. I was on a path of, well, you know, I, I felt freedom. So once I, once I was out of the community, I just felt so much freedom. Like I have the whole world before me. I mean, you talk about just completely losing it. I was like, wow, I can do whatever I want. I have no uh, I have no fear. I just, man, this is peace right here. You know, I just kind of had that mindset of I can just do whatever I want. So all the wild oats I want because I can't get in trouble in church. Well, you know, I had, uh, I had 21 tickets, moving violations, speeding tickets in five years. I even wrecked my car in front of an Amish home and hit the manure spreader. I bought the car. I bought the car and uh, within 24 hours, I rolled it and completely totaled it. Done. Cashed it off with cash I had saved up. Wouldn't listen to my buddy that helped me get out of the Amish. He says, you don't drive until I'm with you. I'll teach you how to drive. Well, guess what? I didn't listen. <laughs> kind of like everything else, I wanted to do it my way. I didn't. I didn't listen to him, so... I'm out there, you know, cruising around, got my first car, and I passed this horse and buggy, and of course it was one of the girls I had a crush on, the Glick girls were on the buggy, I'm looking, I'm waving, you know, I drive right off the curve, right, oh, real close to the school where I went to school at, I drive right, I drive right off the curve and go through the fence and I flip the car and all, it, it was all messed up, no cops got called, I would have, I didn't even have a license yet, I didn't even have a license yet. I, uh, I just wanted to drive. I was like, man, I'm free now. I can do what I want. I can have a car. I'm just going to go start driving. Well, I learned real quick that I got to follow the rules or it just doesn't work out so well. <laughs> so what I did is I had to go buy another car. I, I made it home. I had all flat tires except for one. Couldn't open the doors. You know, they were all ransacked, you know, because I rolled the car. So I had to, uh, I drove it home about 10 miles an hour. My buddy ripped me. Oh, did he rip me? Got to wait until I was with you so we can do it safely. Well, heck, I didn't care about a license plate on the car. I didn't care about having a driver's license. I felt freedom. I was like, huh, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to follow no rules. I bought my, I have my cash, you know, I bought my first car and I said, man, it's time to hit the road. And I hit, I hit the road. <laughs> so I just uh, kind of went on this path, of course, of uh, like you could imagine an Amish boy leaving the church, leaving the rules the cult and kind of feeling that freedom. So I kind of made some bad choices, a uh, lots of bad choices. Uh, I've only been reading the Bible for about two years now in my life out here now. So, uh, I just went on a path for a while, even got a bankruptcy. I just did everything the way I wanted to do it. You know, just uh, the alcohol. I became an alcoholic. Always said I wouldn't do what my dad did. Well, I did. And so everything the world had to offer, I wanted all of it. So I didn't, I didn't have anything. I had no fear of the Lord. Make it that way. I should have had a fear of the Lord. 
but I didn't. So there I go. And I just do my own thing. You know, I became an alcoholic and drugs, weed. I mean, women, I mean, just, you know, you know how a young teenage boy is, you know? So I just, uh, I just went on my own little path. Didn't listen to nobody except my own feelings. And I thought, well, if I just do whatever I want, I'm free. I'll be happy. I'll be at peace. Oh no. See, alcohol always became just a short term pleasure. Sexual sin, eh, short-term pleasure. I mean, everything was short-term. But if I'd have dived my head, my nose head first into the Bible, guess what? If I'd have put my faith and trust into the Lord Jesus Christ after leaving the Amish, I would have had that eternal peace that I needed. The peace that doesn't give you a hangover. So I realized real quick that my way wasn't going to work. Ended up with a bankruptcy. And I wasn't really getting anywhere. My first wife, I put her through a bunch of crap. You know, I I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. I was a confused little Amish boy that just left. And of course, I only dated her for a little bit. So I kind of felt like, well, you know, the Amish way of life, got to get married. You know, if, if you want to be with a woman, you, you kind of got to get married. And uh, so I thought, well, we were kind of rushed into that. Shouldn't have done that. Rushed right into the marriage. And, of course, me, growing up Amish, I, I didn't know how to treat a woman out here. I was a confused little Amish boy. It didn't last very long. About a year and a half later, I was already divorced. And I, I was then just turned loose, basically. Uh, the path I went on was just, you know, going to bars, going to clubs, uh, drinking, getting drunk, drinking and driving. Got a DUI, ended up getting one of them. Uh, so I realized that I wasn't going to get anywhere if I stay on the path that I'm on. Just wasn't going to work. So several years ago, I, I turned back to the Lord. And of course, now when I first started reading the Bible, I, I read a couple of verses here and there. Nothing was really sticking. And I realized that, uh, you know, I had some guilt. That Amishness, that Amishness was coming back in my brain. And I felt kind of guilty. See, that never left me. So I had this guilt and I thought, you know, if I want to be a Christian, I'm going to have to be Amish. And I actually went through through my clothes, my wife now that I'm married to, she was willing to go along with it. She says, well, all right, well, if that's what you want to do, whatever makes you happy, we'll just go Amish. And we were going through some stuff that we wasn't allowed to have in the Amish. And, and my cousin, David Yoder, you know, out of the Amish too, and he says, you know, I'd advise you to, to read the Bible. You know, see, see what God has to say, you know, before you make this big decision. He was a little devastated. And a lot of other ex-Amish that was already out of the Amish, they said, wow, are you serious? You went from partying and being the wildest, craziest guy, throwing the biggest parties, and now you want to go back Amish? Well, I thought I had to to be a Christian if I want to get to heaven. But that just shows you how brainwashed I was as a little boy growing up. I thought, if I'm not Amish, I'm not going to make it to heaven. So therefore, I lived it the way I wanted to live it. Because I said, you know, why would I try to be a Christian and read the Bible if I can't make it to heaven because I'm not Amish, so I can't make it to heaven. That's the mindset I had for a long time. And I had to snap that. I had to be set free. And by the way, the only way to be set free, the Word of God. What's God have to say? And, and when my cousin David Yoder said that, how about you read the Bible first? Boom, that's exactly what happened. Now, I like to see what God has to say. Not man-made rules, not humans, not no cult, Amish. See, Jesus Christ will save us if we put all our faith and trust in Him. That's it. Amish won't save you. Buddha won't save you. Allah won't save you. Jehovah's Witness won't save you. No other man-made religion, no other denomination of a church, nothing else will save you. Jesus the Christ will save you. All me and you have to do is put our full faith and trust into the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, and I'm quoting Jesus. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, through him. Verses like that started sticking with me. I said, wait a minute. I can put my full faith and trust in him and make it to heaven? Yeah. There's no more rules. I wasn't finding any rules in the Bible. I read the, the New Testament four times, back to back. And I thought, wow, no man-made rules in there. No, no Amish stuff that I was taught in the Amish. I'm not finding it in the Bible. 
Ha! Huh. Then it started dawning on me. Wow. Am I glad I didn't go back Amish when I thought I might have to go back Amish to, in order to get to heaven? Started getting rid of my clothes, sorting through everything. And my wife saw me change. All at once, I'm not talking about going Amish no more. And she says, oh, having a change of heart, are you? Yep. I only want to go by what God says. Not no man-made religion, not no cult. So this verse right here that I'm about to share with you. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. That is when I woke up. This right here. And by the way, this verse that I'm about to share with you. If, you're, if you are familiar with any Amish in my beloved Kenton, Ohio Amish community, not just my family, but every Amish you run into, if you know the gospel, share it with them. They need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, and by the way, if you need a Bible and you want to learn how you can put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, personal message me and give me your address. I will send you a Bible, every tab is all those tabs color coded are the saving, how, the salvation messages, and I'll send you a wristband with it. I got one on my wrist, has all the Ephesians chapter 2, 8, and 9 all on there. I'll send you one for free. How can I do that? Because all that beer I used to drink, when I used to get drunk, and get hammered, living in my sinful ways, in my wicked ways I was in for many years. I now put that alcohol money back and I buy these little Bibles, these little mini Bibles, this size right here. And I will give them to you for free. If you message me, instant message me, give me your address. If you want one, I'll send you a couple of them and I'll send you the wristband with it. It's got all the salvation verses right on the wristband. And if you know the gospel, go share it with the Amish. They need to be brought to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, we all look at, everybody else is looking at the Amish like they're such religious good people that are going to heaven, but yet they stay away from salvation. They won't preach it. They just stay away from it. They listen to the church too much. So we have to plant the seed, the Bible says. God can make it grow. So if, if you simply want to be a taxi and you want to go give the Amish a ride, or if you just want to go buy a loaf of bread or some kind of pie or something and share that, share these verses with them. Check it out what it says. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Put our faith in Him. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. Isn't that amazing? And then check out verse 9. Not of works. Hello? Not of works? What are the Amish doing? It says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. What do they do? They boast about their good works, their rules, their laws, their legalism. They're ha they hang their hat on that, on that works, those things they do, thinking they're going to prove to God that they belong in heaven. But it says clearly right here in verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. You can't do anything to try to prove to God by your good works. Jesus finished it all. He did it all for them. They just don't know it yet. Somebody's got to share it with them. I tried to share it with my mom, the salvation. She didn't like hearing that. She don't like me using the word saved, the word salvation. And she says, you know, I don't like when the devil uses somebody to persuade our way of life. I said, okay, all right. If you think the devil's using Eli Yoder to bring you the salvation message, I don't have to go no further. You can't feed the gospel to somebody that's not hungry for it. Somebody that don't want it. Me and you, if we want to know God, and we really want it, we're hungry for it, we're going to, God will show us through the Holy Spirit. He'll pour out the Holy Spirit on me and you, and He'll teach us when we're reading the Word of God. That's all we got to do. I always share the ABCs of salvation. A, admit we're a sinner. B, believe Jesus is Lord. And C, call upon the name of the Lord. And then this verse here in Romans 10, 9. See, I was living in my sinful garbage for many years after I left the Amish, wanted to live it my way. And when I first started reading the Bible, I read this verse right here, Romans 10, verse 9. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm like, oh, I can do that. But I lived in my sin still. See, it's not just about that verse. I could confess Jesus is Lord, 
but I didn't repent from my sins. I stayed in my alcoholism. I stayed in my sexual sin. I wanted everything the world had to offer, but I wasn't willing to repent. So I wasn't willing to change my life for what the Bible says. We have to make the Bible apply to our lives and repent. That's what it's all about. So if you want to tell somebody today out in the Amish, simply buy a loaf of bread or give them a ride, tell them, preach that salvation message to them because they need to hear it too. They don't preach it. They don't hear it in the church. The church doesn't preach salvation. But like I said, you message me, I'll send you a free Bible and a wristband. Romans 3.10 says, There is no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. See, when I read those verses, I'm like, wow. Only Jesus the Christ was the only perfect one. All the rest of us are sinners. So we just have to simply be ready to admit that we're a sinner. I couldn't do that for a long time. I was too prideful. I was so prideful, I thought I know it all. I was basically my own God. I didn't want to listen to nobody else. It was my way or the highway. Don't tell me about Jesus. I'm living my life and I love it. But yet I was living in sin. Living in, living in a lot of wickedness. And I had to turn and repent. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Are you ready to call upon the name of the Lord today? It is simple and easy. Actually, Romans 10, verse 10 says, For it is with your heart, with your heart, that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. It's that simple. So simple. It doesn't take much. No good works. No man-made rules. None of that. And you just put your full faith into the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved by God's grace through faith. And it's a gift from God, not of our works. We can't do anything to prove to Him we belong there. Because He's already finished it at the cross. Finished it. He said it was finished. And it is finished. We don't need to go do any... See, there's nothing the devil likes more is using humans and cults like Amish, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, Catholics, all these different denominations. When I left the Amish, the biggest confusing thing was all of these churches, all of these different denominations. And I'm thinking, man, if I wanted to go to a church, where would I start? There's all these different denominations. Who's right? Who's wrong? Well, all you got to do, if you want to know what's right, read the Holy Scriptures. Read what God has to say. That's all we need. You don't have to listen to no denomination, man, church. See what he has to say. Once I started reading and got to know him, then I found the church. See, Jesus, once you fully accept him all the way, then he changes your heart. Now the Holy Spirit is dwelling upon me. I was ready to find me a church. I go to New Hampshire Community Church. I live in Waynesfield. New Hampshire is just around the corner, basically, from Waynesfield. And I went to that church. And I, I was a one and done. That's the only church I went. Non-denominational church. No man-made rules. They just preached the gospel. And I was ready to go find me a church. Because Jesus had transformed my heart. And then last year, 2019, I told my pastor, I said, I'm ready to get baptized. I'm on fire for the Lord. I know what he's done for me. Do you know why the gospel is called the good news? The gospel is called the good news because... When I was finally done with all that sexual sin, that drinking, that garbage I was in, when I was finally done with that, and I read how, the, how Jesus died for all sin, for all of us, that was good news. See, I didn't want to go and try to go to a church or read the Bible because I thought, if I'm not Amish, I'm not going to make it to heaven. But yet, the good news was, Jesus had finished it. I didn't have to do anything else. He died for all my sin. Wow, that was good news. That's why they call the gospel the good news. doesn't matter what you've done or what I've done in our past. It is all forgiven. All we got to do is put all that past garbage we've done, put it at the foot of the cross, and never look back. Leave it right there. Jesus finished it. Don't look back. Just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Today's the day of salvation. See, He didn't come back yet today, so there's still time. And don't let the devil play with your mind like you got to go do something special to earn your salvation. You can't earn it. You just put your full faith and trust into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all you got to do. I got to hit the road and go pick up another load. Uh, 
I didn't share that earlier. Now, since it's in the, I've been out of the Amish 22 years. I'm a truck driver now. Got my GED in 2009. Got my CDL right afterwards. Because when I left the Amish, I only had an eighth grade education. So in order to get a better job, I had to go and uh, get my GED so that I can get a higher paying job. So now I'm a truck driver. So that's usually when I'm preaching. It's when I'm sitting here in the dock getting either loaded or unloaded. But hey, I got to go pick up another load. Y'all have a blessed day today. I love y'all. See ya.